Starting us off will be a living legend, one of the most accomplished Muay Thai practitioners of all time, heading into the final fight of his storied career. Ladies and gentlemen, John Wayne Parr. John, how are you, my friend? Hey, thank you so much. Uh, what an introduction. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it is finally here. You're competing on the biggest card in the history of one championship. What's the mindset going into this one? Uh, very excited. Uh, just trying to absorb the moments uh, every, every day. Um, enjoying my runs. As, uh, the other day, uh, my, my, my daughter was doing sit-ups on the bench, and as I was doing my uh, rounds on the pads, in between rounds, I've looked at her going, this is the last time you see me as a competitive fighter. This is the last one. So I got a little bit uh, realism sort of caught up just for a second. But I, uh, yeah, just having fun and just um, savoring every second. It's a piece of history, man. Uh, we're going to go to our first media question. We start off with Timothy Wheaton of Calf Kick Sports. Go ahead, Timothy. Hey, thanks so much for taking the question. Got two questions for you, John Wayne Parr. First of all, what do you find it? What do you remember as the most accomplished moment of your storied career? And we also have a listener question for you, and you're the most qualified person to answer. In your experience, what is the biggest difference between fighting native Thai fighters versus foreign fighters in Muay Thai? Okay. Uh, so the, the biggest um, accomplishment was the S1 at Raja Modern Stadium in Bangkok. Uh, I had to fight three times in two hours. Uh, I fought a Russian, a French gentleman, and then I fought a a Thai had previously beaten me three times in a row. And then um, I finally beat him. And then it was a million baht, a world title, and a trophy from the Prime Minister of Thailand, all on Thai t TV. So, and the next day, um, I went down to the news agent and every TV, uh, sorry, every newspaper and magazine, it was just, my face was everywhere. It was, it was just absolutely amazing. And then walking down the street, tuk tuks and taxis would just stop on the side of the road and jump out and ask for photos. And it was like, I'm getting recognized by Thai. This is the dream. So... That was uh, probably definitely the, the biggest moment. And then, um, yeah, and the difference between uh, uh, fighting ties and non ties. Uh, ties are so uh, precise. Uh, Western has come up with a bit more craziness, um, whereas, whereas ties are so calculated and, and so uh, powerful. When they hit you, they hit you. And if there's a, a, a 50 cent piece on your arm, they get that piece every single time. It's, um, yeah, they're, they're so brutal. Uh, Westerners are crazy because they come at all different angles and you never know, and they don't stop. Whereas Thai is a bit more calculated and a bit more cunning. So, um, fighting Thai is fun because you get to play the game in. Timothy, great, thank you very us? much. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks so much for the answer. Appreciate that. Best of luck in your upcoming match, eh? Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely. Nice one, Timothy. Can we ask you to move just a touch to your right? We need the symmetry of JWP. Beautiful. All right, hey. next up, we're going to go to Nick Atkin of SEMP MMA. Off you go, Nick. Hey, guys. Uh, hey, John Wayne Parr. Thank you for taking my question. Um, just want to, first of all, get your thoughts on this matchup against Edward Flying. How much do you know about him? How much have you followed his career throughout your career? Uh, yeah, he's a superstar. Uh, I'm so honored to share the cage with him. It's been really cool. Uh, yeah, he's powerful. He's, um, yeah, he's very, very fast, uh, very explosive. I have to be very um, wary of where things are coming from because, yeah, there's no, there's, there's no set course. Everything's so, um, yeah, erratic. Uh, but it's exciting. You know, it brings out the the fire in my belly when I'm training. So I know I have a hard fight in front of me that makes me train harder too. Uh, yeah, I'm very excited. I can't wait. And I know you maybe spoke about this before, but uh, what what do you, um, do, would you still like to fight Dan Hardy? I know you want to retire after this. You said it's your last fight, but if that opportunity came again, would that be something that would tempt you maybe to have one more? Oh, gee, maybe, for sure. If I'm, probably even, maybe in boxing. I love, I love the boxing, uh, Dan as well. Uh, it's a, a boxing's a little bit more easy on the body as well. Um, yeah, for sure. If the opportunity arose and, and someone wanted to, to put some money out there as well, I, I, uh, I'm always keen to try and uh, pay off my investments. As, so, yeah, I mean, who knows? Who knows? But I don't think so. Were you annoyed that that one fell through? It seemed like both of you were, were up for it, but they, they couldn't come to an agreement on it. Yeah, it was quite bizarre. Uh, my thought was going to happen for sure. There was so much hype, so much... Uh, 
uh, so many comments in the on the Instagrams and stuff, and people were really excited about the match, and then yeah, just fell through the gaps. But uh, uh funny, it was uh, so exciting. It's, it's uh, even better. He comes with so many more uh, credentials and um, a superstar in the Philippines, and it's going to be um, yeah, this is a good a good fight. I, I, the the risk to reward is very rewarding. <laughs> And yeah, just one more for me. Um, it's such a stacked card. What else are you looking forward to the most on it? Oh, gee, there's so many good fights. This is going to be such a crazy day. Um, I'm just excited to be in the same hotel as everyone and rock up to the same venue and shake a lot of hands and and, and be a fan and get some selfies with everybody. Um, I get to meet uh, 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 everyone in real life. Um, you, you see them on TV and on the internet. And then when you meet person to person, it's so cool. And that's one of the joys of this job is getting to meet the superstars. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, um, hopefully, I, I'm, I'm flying in, I think, so hopefully I'll catch you on the ground. Uh, uh, beautiful, uh, very cool. I look forward uh, yeah. to meeting you. Cool, good luck. No, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Next up, we have James Reese of Overtime Heroics. Your mic is open, James. Hi, John. Hey, good mate. I um first of all, I just... oh, did we lose you? Oh, oh sorry, my back. There you are. He's back. Yeah. Back. Um, sorry, John. First of all, um, congratulations on what what can be described as a legendary career. Um, the question I wanted to ask really was, how much does it mean to you to be able to finish your competitive career then? on such a huge show like the One X anniversary show and a wow. bigger part of the, the, does the 100th win mean deal? Yes, the 100th win is everything. Um, yeah, to, at the end of the day, like money's cool, but to, to, to get to 100 wins, uh, not many people in around the world, not many white people anyway, um, ties two, three, four hundred fights, there's no worries, but to be a, a Westerner and get 100 wins, it's like, yeah, so 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 special, um, and it puts me in a, in a different league. It puts me in a, in a class above. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm really excited just to to finish, knowing that all my career is all down to this one fight, and if I can get this, just makes the cherry on top perfect. Yeah, definitely fantastic career. Um, thank you very much, John, and um, hey, good luck in your fight. Hey, cheers, man. thank you. Cheers, James. We. Go now to Dylan Bowker of Sports Kida. Off you go, Dylan. Hey there, John. I appreciate you making some time. Hey, good evening. I'm just kind of curious because, you know, getting ready to, you know, take in your sixth fight there in Singapore per that recent Instagram post, but it seems like a lot yeah. of awesome compatriots are coming out for this one. Like, how does that all make you feel? I imagine it's exciting. Oh, it's very surreal. Um, yeah, to have everyone's support and... Uh, to, to go back to, to Singapore is so special to me because of uh, the contender and the uh, that helped shoot me up to a, a, a different level of fame. Um, got everyone know who I was and then to have the, the, the grand final with Red Singh back in 2008. It was such a special moment, a special, special country. And then to be back there again and to finish in Singapore, it's just, it just, uh, just seems right. It just seems perfect. So, yeah, um, I feel very blessed to uh, how everything's panned out. Yeah, absolutely. And your daughter also interwoven into the, the fighting fabric as well. Like, are you thinking you're going to be taking on a more prominent coaching role as you kind of phase out of the competitive career there? Oh, for sure. Um, approximately uh, 30 fighters on with me, plus my kids. Um, and then, yeah, now we, got, we start, just started jiu-jitsu in the gym uh, two years ago. And between the jiu-jitsu comps and now MMA comps and Muay Thai comps, uh, we're very busy. So, yeah, yeah, um, yeah I've got to that stage now in my career where it's like, oh, I think the guys need me more than me traveling around the world and not being back for a few weeks at a time. So, um, yeah, it's just that time to knuckle down and be an adult, I guess. And just lastly, for me here, because you had that post that I referenced just a bit ago where you had your first kickboxing fight in 1991 when you were... Mm -hmm. 14 readying to you know potentially get that 100th victory there like if i talked to the 14 oh, year old or would you have ever imagined that or oh no way I, 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 back then i thought oh, imagine if i had 10 fights imagine 10 
mate, double figures. That would be insane. And then, and then you reach 10 and you want 20 and then it's 50. And then, yeah, no way in the world. I was happy when I, uh, my 100th fight was against uh, Borca in Jamaica. So that was pretty cool. But uh, to get the 100 win on uh, 1X on one of the bigger shows, is just Mr. Chatry is um, just the man for allowing me to have this opportunity. He, he could have uh, said goodbye to me, but he was the one that influenced me. He said, come on, uh, let's, let's do one more. Let's do a farewell fight. And he, he's the one that lit the fire in my belly and, and to put me on this show, I just can't thank you the man enough. He's it's so cool. I feel so honored and privileged to be on the card. Well, thanks so much for the insights, man. A privilege talking to you and looking forward uh, to thank checking you, this Thank you, Dylan. Our next question comes in via text from Luis Morales of Philippine Star. You mentioned in past interviews that you expect Edward Fulayang to spin once or twice during your fight at 1X. What exactly do you think you would need to get past an out-of-the-box striker like Foliang? Can you share with us in detail? Uh, oh, geez. Uh, yeah, I try not to stand in the pocket when he attacks. I uh, don't be there when he tries to hit me. Uh, and when I do hit him, make sure that I get out before he gets angry. Nothing worse than fighting someone that's angry because I really want to try and hurt you twice as bad. <laughs> so, yeah, just um, yeah, hit him more than he hits me. It's just basic. There's no real science to it. It's just go. <laughs> Fighting angry is an interesting concept. You've fought a lot of fascinating characters and legends of the sport. Have you ever wanted to take someone's head off in there? Have you ever had any animosity of all the guys you fought in the past? Yes. A matter of fact, it was a, as a massive learning curve. Um, I fought that gentleman on the contender rally TV show. Um, and then he, he was just so annoying. And then every, uh, we had this challenge and I ended up picking him and then uh, all the film crew, all the fighters, all the trainers, everyone's come up to me behind my, hey, you have to beat this guy, you got to get him out of his house. He's so annoying. So I had oh, so much pressure. And then because the harder I tried to knock him out, the more it wouldn't happen. And then it starts playing minds, uh, games in your mind because I, I want to get this guy out of here, but he's still fighting back. And then uh, it makes you more mentally tired. So I, there was a, I won the fight, but I, I learned the, not to get that emotional ever again just just um, focus and stay loose instead of getting emotion getting into the fight otherwise yeah everything goes to mud then that's a fascinating mindset uh yeah. we're gonna go then to andrew mack next from mma island off you go andrew hi john thank you for taking my question hey. good evening so so how familiar are you with wushu have you brought any wushu fighters into your training camp to train against uh, no, uh, it, it, even though it was amazing, um, it's a Muay Thai fight, so I got to train Muay Thai. So, but uh, I, I've I've got a couple of guys in the gym that that, that move pretty slick, um, and, and and can do side kicks and back kicks and um, keeping me on on my toes. Uh, so I, I'm prepared for whatever happens. Um, yeah, and then uh, I, I I'm I'm quite confident that I got this one. I, I I'm my spine is going really well. Um, I've been doing a little, uh, lots of training and I feel fit I feel ready so, so yeah what happens happens all right thank you can't wait to see you work your craft hey thank you John I'm interested you're a bit of a pioneer in martial arts and MMA gloves and different disciplines what do you make of the Rod Tang DJ fight uh, and how intrigued are you this is happening on the same card oh this is amazing this is the this is the fight uh yeah it's so it's so exciting um Rod Tang is just a different animal he just um i, I wonder if he's gonna drop his hands and, and then call mighty mouse on because that'll be just mind-blowing um yeah i i'm just worried about round two because uh demetrius johnson is just so awesome so and it takes so long to learn the ground I, I, i've been there myself where i had two months to try and um, learn as much as i could that before my first MMA fight and then once once because in the gym you can practice going step by step grab the arm Talk to the side and the arm and then over. But on the ring, it's like, ah! you don't have time. To, you don't have time to do anything. It's just like, it's on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's going to be, yeah, I just hope it's an exciting fight and it goes no distance. But yeah, if we can get four rounds, that'd be just perfect. But I don't think so. <laughs> Rod Tank's getting a lot of love now. And I think new fans and maybe the States are starting to discover him as well. Who's the one uh, guy? Maybe from the next generation who really excites you at the moment? Oh, who excites me? Jeez, that's a good question. Um, 
Mr. Haggerty, he's amazing. He's so cool. He's uh, he's so brutal and so aggressive and so exciting. He just comes forward and just doesn't stop throwing. It's really cool. Uh, who else? Oh, there's, everyone. There's, the, being a part of one, just every time you turn on the fights, it's, it's just show-stopping every time. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm so happy to be here. I can't believe that I'm part of such an amazing organisation with such, so many great fighters. Do you think Haggerty gets it done in a trilogy eventually with Rod Tang? Well, oh, that's another good question. Jeez, uh, it's tough. They're, they're so, they're both brutal. Um, yeah, I, I, who knows? Yeah, I, I have no answer. <laughs> I, don't, I wish I could say, which, I'm on the fence. We'll get to find out eventually, I reckon. Yeah. We've got another text question coming in from Khan of Daily News Thailand. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home as a retired martial artist? Oh, geez. That's going to be... I don't know. Uh, that's a good question. Um, yeah, just uh, appreciate the family. Just uh, and just work hard in the gym and try, and try and build that and make that more successful than it is. Um, try and get the next lot of fighters out. And yeah, that's it. Just uh, I live, breathe, sleep this sport. So um, to have it not part of me and and then having it now having to share it, it's a uh, it, it's exciting. So I'm 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 looking forward to the future. Yeah, we're, we're very much looking forward to Saturday. We've got another question from the main man over at SCMP MMA. Go ahead, Nick Atkin. Sorry, I'm back, John. Um, <laughs> I forgot to ask you this one earlier. I know the last time you fought against Nikki Hoskin, uh, you had you documented it on your Instagram. You you had the little struggle with the weight and hydration test. So have you got that under control this time? And you know what steps have you taken to make sure you don't have the same problems again? Oh, this um, the the first time that I fought Nikki, I was nine months after surgery, and then I still couldn't uh, road run. Uh, I was I, I bought one of those uh, assault bikes to try and get the sweat and the same cardio, but uh, running's been such a uh, integrated part of my training for 30 years and did not have that I just felt um, and then without the running I, my weight doesn't drop I, I, if I do if I run consistently twice a day uh, five days a week uh, my weight will naturally just come down so usually I, once I'm week seven eight of the camp I'm down to 76 77 anyway but this camp uh, the camp with Nikki I, I did everything on the bike and did everything on the pads and get, did get everything normal but my weight didn't shift and I, I rocked up to Singapore 84 and then they had treadmills in the room, so I'd run twice a day on the treadmills, and I went to seventy six. Um, so I was well under, but yeah, the hydration test just they they could tell by the hydration that I dropped too much too fast. This time I've I've taken it easy um, through diet and hard work and and um, time. Uh, I'm right down now, so I'm almost walking around fight weight already. So I'm very happy. Yeah, and you, you had a health scare, didn't you, earlier this year, or was it late last year? Um, with I think uh, you got. Yeah, New Year's, you had some uh, complications, I think, with COVID. Uh, can you just talk us through what happened there, or, you know, what you were feeling like, and has it paid any? Has it, have you had any issues from that now with the training camp? Yeah, it's been um, it was a bit scary. The, we got the got the sick, uh, had flu symptoms for three days, but then uh, chest pain started on day two, and like uh, not normal chest pain. It's like, oh, something's going on. And then I told my wife, and then it sort of eased up a little bit. And I thought, oh, I won't worry about it. But that night, it happened again. I'm laying in bed going, oh, no, I don't want to die in my sleep. And I don't want my family to find me if I do happen to die. So um, next day I thought, oh, it's bad enough to go to hospital. And then at least if I die there, then, then they can just tell <laughs> me. I don't want to die at home. That would be terrible. And then, uh, yeah, they at hospital, they can't do nothing anyway. They just monitor you to make sure everything's okay. And everything, all my tests come back fine. I just couldn't get rid of the pain. So the pain lasted seven days. And then... They said, oh, we'll, we'll lease you back to, we'll take, take you back home. I said, oh, should I get my wife to come pick me up? I said, no, we got COVID. We'll, we'll take you home by ambulance. Oh, I'm going to go home by ambulance. How was that? And then the ambulance driver was saying, oh, you better hope you don't develop long COVID. Otherwise, you could have these symptoms for um, months, if not years. So, oh, but luckily, um, it's all come back um, back to normal. Uh, training's been going really well. Um, yeah, no, no side effects. So, um, yeah, ready to go. Those kind of things put everything in perspective, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was saying Michael Boys and everything, thanking, thanking the Lord for what an amazing life it's been. And I, I was, I kid you not, I was doing my, it's been fun. If it's time to go, it's time to go. I was really saying that in my head. It's like, oh, 
all right, well, if it's not, geez, <laughs> but luckily, yeah, come out the other side. So, and then now I appreciate things a lot more too. It's like, oh, it's good to be here because I get the fight now. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I mentioned Leaky Holskin as well. I know he was meant to be on this card against uh, Islam Matsayev. But it looks like that fight's no longer on after the um, invasion of Ukraine with Russia and all that situation. Uh, is it a shame for you to not see Nikki on there? I think you, you guys have a lot of mutual respect after going yeah, through yeah. that battle. Yeah, and then we call to just hang out and just see each other at the hotel and say good day and uh, ha- have a man hug. Uh, we, we shared a moment in time together. Uh, I, I, and then I have so much respect for all the fighters and then uh, 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 opponents that we've shared the cage with. So, yeah, Nikki's cool. He's a, he's a man. Uh, I'd, I'd like to get another selfie with him and catch up. All right, man. Thanks again for answering my questions. Hey, thank you. Thanks, Nick. Our next question comes from Ivan of Dugout Philippines. Ivan, off you go. Yes, thank you very much. Actually, I was supposed to type a question as well. So, good evening uh, from the Philippines, uh, John Wayne. So, good, so, like you, Edward Fulang is also a combat sports legend here in the Philippines. Like, He's a Wushu champion, Wushu Sander champion. He also won championships locally in, in MMA. So what would this fight mean for you and even Edward's legacy, considering that both of you are now kind of aging and you're going to be retiring very soon? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's so special. It's such a special fight. Uh, it's, it's more than just a fight. Um, to, to share the, the ring with a, a, a legend, it's, it's so cool. It's, um, it motivates me to want to be better. It makes it. I want to win, um, and then when it's a, a when you fight a legend too, it, that makes it more exciting. It makes it more real. Um, yeah, I just I I think it's gonna be fireworks. I think I think it's gonna be one of the fight of the nights. It's gonna be so cool. I can't wait. So just a quick follow. So are you happy that your fight will be held at the nightcap event, the third part of the one X? Oh, so amazing! All right, I, I uh, as soon as I seen it, I had to share it on um, my Instagram because it's like this is amazing. I'm I'm almost stunned. I'm almost retired. I could have been on the prelim show at the lunchtime show, and then here I am on the main card. This is like a dream come true. Like like I said before, Mr. Chetri is so such a legend. I can't thank him enough for the opportunities that he's let me uh, shine on such a massive show. All right, thank you very much, John. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thank you. Thank you, Ivan, JWP. Have you got a final message for the fans ahead of Saturday? Uh, uh, thank you to everyone that follows one, one championship. This is such a massive fight. And I'm so excited to uh, share my last memory with you guys. And I hope I can put on an amazing performance and hopefully get the KO win in my 100th uh, career championships. What an absolute legend. Sir, thank you. It's been a pleasure to watch you work. We can't wait to see the last dance on the 26th. Nice fun. Hey, thank you so much. Thank you.